Number 53, letter A. A 75 kilogram man floats in fresh water with 3% of his volume above water when his lungs are empty and 5% of his volume above water when his lungs are full. Calculate the volume of the air he inhales called his lung capacity in liters. All right. So uh, on a problem like this, um, first thing is we can take a look at these two pictures set up right here is the first case where his lungs are empty 3% of his body uh, the volume is above water therefore 97% is below when his lungs are full 5% is above and now 95% is below so we remember a couple of easy formulas it's best to start off with just these uh, easy formulas here detailing uh, the fraction submerged all right remember that the fraction submerged um, of an object is going to be equal to the density of that object divided then by the density of the fluid in which that object is in. So breaking this formula down into specifics now, for this scenario, the fraction submerged of the man with his lungs empty, so the fraction submerged with the empty lungs, will be equal to the density of the man when his lungs are empty. I'm going to leave that with a little sub e. This is the density of the man's body when his lungs are empty, divided by then the density of the water. He's in fresh water, as it tells us in the problem. And the formula now for the second problem, or not second problem, but the second picture, will be similar, right? Fraction submerged. Fraction submerged for this picture is now going to be equal to the density of the man's body when his lungs are full. Okay? Divided then by the density of the water. Okay. So we have these two equations set up. Now... From here, let's, let's begin working with what the question is kind of asking, right? It's asking us, calculate the volume of air that he inhales. So it's a little tricky to figure out how to start uh, this particular problem, but why don't, we start, why don't we start by identifying, we know we're going to have to be somehow talking about this particular picture, right? And we also know that uh, we have to somehow find the volume of his lungs. And if you notice, right, in terms of the nature of this picture, his lungs are going to be beneath the water. And that being the case, right, the volume, the change in volume will definitely make a difference in terms of the fraction submerged, okay, because it is beneath the water, right? I mean, 95% of his body is below and his lungs would be, cons you know, we can safely say that his lungs are in that vicinity of 95% um, below his head. And also, we also have to take into account the additional mass. That's the trick to this question, the additional mass that comes along with inhaling some breath. Now, you could probably simplify the question and assume that there is no change in mass. However, uh, to properly do the problem, it's going. we need to take that into account. All right, I'm going to do it that way uh, because if the problem changes where the mass is significant, you now know how to do it. So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's take a look at this formula. So we know that. So the density, right? The density of the. Uh, uh, why don't we say this? The density of the man, when his lungs are full, is now going to be equal to his total mass when his lungs are full, divided by his total volume when his lungs are full. This should kind of make intuitive sense, right? So the the density of the man when his lungs are fully is equal to the total mass of that man when his lungs are full divided by the total volume of that man when his lungs are full. So now I can break these two terms up into two individual pieces. Right? Follow me here. So we can say that the density of the man when, when his lungs are full is now going to be equal to the total mass. And what is the total mass of this particular case? Well, we could break it up this way. It's the mass of the man when his lungs are empty, plus then the mass of the additional air that he took in. That should make sense, right? If the only difference between this picture and this picture is going to be that he inhaled some amount of air, his mass changed from his mass being his mass when he was empty, plus now just this little extra volume of air that's in his uh, lungs, right? So that should hopefully be good. And now similarly, we can also expand on the total volume here, where we can say that uh, the total volume now would be the volume of the man's body when his lungs are empty, plus then the volume of air that he inhaled, right? All right. So now, really what we're after is this, right? We're after the velocity, the volume of air um, that he took in. So 
In order to figure this out, right, we need to know every other variable in this equation. So let's investigate. Do we know the density of the man's body when his lungs are full? Well, no, right? It didn't tell me in the problem, but we do have an equation down here. And we can take this and we can solve this, right, for the density of the man's body when his lungs are full. All we would have to do is just do a cross multiplication here, correct? So let me just put that in a different color just so we, we, we can track this. I'm going to move this up a little bit. And we can actually, you know what, let me move this over here. Let me move this on up. Okay, so we can solve this formula as I was mentioning. We can say that the density of the man's lungs when, uh, excuse me, the density of the man's body when his lungs are full, is gonna be equal to the fraction submerged, right, when his lungs are full, so I'm gonna leave that uh, sub F, uh, then multiplied by the density of the water. Okay, really I should change the two subscripts here. Instead of fraction submerged, I'll leave F to be fraction submerged, and then I'll write a little sub F here for when his lungs are full. Similarly, I'm going to do this when his lungs are empty. Okay, so now I can start substituting, right? I do know these values, so I can plug that in if I like, right? I can plug that into um, the density, right? So we can say that the fraction submerged when his lungs are full multiplied now the density of the water. Remember, it's fresh water. This one you're probably going to have to memorize, 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Then it's going to equal the mass of his, um, the mass of his uh, body when his lungs are empty. And that they told us in the problem, right? 75 kilograms. So we do know this. So I'm just going to leave this alone. I'm just going to write M sub E. We do know that. Plus then the mass of the air that he inhaled. Now, is there anywhere we, we, we can figure that out? Well, not exactly, right? We don't have anything, according to these pictures, there's no particular way we can figure that out. However, if you think about this formula over here, right, what I can do is I'm basically thinking about how do I get this mass out of my equation and somehow maybe I can get volume of air in. Because if I can get volume of air in place for the mass of the air, then I have two volume of airs in my equation, and I can just combine like terms, right? I gotta do a little algebra, combine like terms, but then I have one unknown instead of two, right? That's simple substitutions. So let me start with this formula up here. This says that the, now remember, I'm talking about air. So this is gonna be the density of air will equal then the mass of the air divided by the volume of air he inhaled, right? So the density of the air he inhaled is equal to the mass of the air he inhaled divided by the volume of the air he inhaled. Now what I need to do is solve this baby for mass. If I do that, right, it's just a simple cross multiplication. So the mass of the air is equal to the density of the air multiplied by the volume of the air. I'm able to do that. Now what I can do is take this value and substitute it into my equation. And now notice I have my variable volume of air. Now the thing is though, you might say, well, what's the density of air? This could, this is, should be probably memorized, another one that's very common. I mean, you should be doing enough practice where these are just being memorized vicariously by doing the problems. But, um, you know, th this, you'll either be given it or you'll have to memorize it. I would memorize it as 1.29 times 10 to the minus three, right? Uh, uh, what is that one? That's in grams, yeah, grams per milliliter, if I remember correctly. So it's just 1.23, excuse me, 1.29 um, kilogram per cubic meter. All right, so we do know that value. So now we can plug that into my equation. So we have the density of air multiplied by the volume of air. Great. Now, divide this now out by volume of the body when it's empty. And we're gonna say, oh no, we don't really know that. We don't have, where, where is that, right? I don't, I, don't have a, I don't have that at all over here again. Well, let's see if we can find it. So first thing is, let's solve this for the density of the man's body when it's when his lungs are empty, just like I did down here for when it's full. Just do a cross multiplication, let me put this in a different color, and we have that the density of the man's body when his lungs are empty will be equal to the fraction of his body submerged when his lungs are empty, multiplied by the density of the water. Okay, so now, how do we find the volume of when his lungs are empty? Well, it's gonna be a very, very similar calculation as we did over here. On the right hand side, when we just did this for the air, we can do a similar analysis now for when his uh, lungs are empty, the volume of his, of his body when his lungs are empty. So let's start with this formula. I'll do this on the right hand side. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase this equation. So if you need that, just write it down. I'm gonna do it on the upper right. So here we're gonna have the density now of the man's body when his lungs are empty. 
will be equal to the mass of the man's body when his lungs are empty, divided by then the volume of his body when his lungs are empty. Now, if we notice, right, if we solve this thing for the volume uh, of his body when his lungs are empty, we just got to kind of switch these two in terms of their location, right? That's basically cross multiplication. So there's going to be mass of the man's body when his lungs are empty divided by the mass of his, excuse me, divided by the density of his body when his lungs are empty. Now, guess what? These are two things that we actually know, right? What's the man's mass when his lungs are empty? 75 kilograms. What's the density of his body when his lungs are empty? <gasps> That's this, right? The fraction of his body submerged when it's empty, that we know, 97%. And the density of water, we also know that, right? So basically, I can just rework this slightly, say that this is the mass of the bo man's body when his lungs are empty, divided them by the fraction submerged when it's empty, div uh, multiplied by the density of water. All I did was took this and substituted it on in. So now, lo and behold, here I have variables that I know. Now I can take this and plug it on in for here, right? And now when I do that, let's see, the mass of the man's body when his lungs are empty divided by now fraction um, submerged when it's empty multiplied by the density of the water plus now the volume of air. Now look, this is beautiful because this equation looks a little complex, but... Think about, you know every variable in this equation now. Everything except for the volume of the air, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, because the, the algebra is gonna get a little tough. We got so many variables all over. In this particular case, I'm just gonna start plugging in the numbers, start simplifying and then solve it that way, all right? Um, it's, just, it's just a little easier. So let me just erase this arrow right now. I'm just going to uh, reshape that one second, because I'm gonna bring, the work on up here. So I'll say that this is going in there for the, yeah, let's go on an angle. There we go. That was going in for the mass of the air. And now let's start plugging in some values, right? So the fraction of the, of his body submerged when his lungs are full, they told us it was 90. I mean, they told 5% was above therefore 95% is below. Remember, we're going to use decimals here. So this is, and I'll put this now in a different color just so we can see the difference. So this is going to be 0 0.95 multiplied by the density of the water. Use the gram, excuse me, use the kilogram per cubic meter. This is 1,000, all right? Then, because it's fresh water, the mass of the body, man's body when his lungs are empty, that they told us was 75 kilograms, plus now the density of air. Remember we said that was 1.29 kilogram per cubic meter, multiplied by now VA, all right? Divided now by the mass of the body, man's body when his lungs are empty, so that's 75 now over the fraction submerged when his lungs are empty, right? That's going to be the 0.95. Okay. Oh, excuse me. When his lungs are empty, that's the 0.97. My apologies. So 0 0.97. And then multiply by the density of that water, which is 1,000, plus now VA. So here it is. We just have to simplify this now, right? So let's, let's do some simplifications here. Um, let's see what we get. So here we're going to get, when we do this math out, right, that's 950, 950. Is going to equal 75 plus now 1 plus 1.29 V sub A, all divided by, let's simplify that fraction now. So 75 divided by 0.97 times 1,000. It works out to a, a lovely fraction, right? So I'm going to use the exact value when I'm calculating, but I'm just going to uh, represent the rounded number here, 0.773 plus then VA. Now let's do our cross multiplications, right? You can pretend that that's over one. We're gonna multiply this across. I'll write it out actually first. So this is 950 times then 0 0.0773 plus VA. That will then equal 75 plus now 1.29 V sub A. Okay, distribute now the 950 on the left-hand side to each, so multiply by 950. So this becomes like 73 uh, 0.45 or so, so 73.45 plus now uh, 950 VA equals then 75 plus 1.29 VA. Now combine like terms, right? Subtract this value on over to the left, subtract this value on over to the right. Again, I'm going to use the exact numbers here. So first I'm going to do 75 minus that 73 point whatever. So we get now this is going to be 1.546, 1.546. Again, I'm 
continually using exact numbers, then take the 950, subtract them 1.29, and this is going to be 948.71. So this is 948.71 VA. And now, as you can see, right, just divide out now the 948. 948.71, 948, 9.48, 9 excuse me, what am I talking about, 948.71, sorry, these cancel leaving us with VA, and I'm going to put the answer now right up here, so let's do it, so we take that exact answer before, the 1.5463917, blah, 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 divide that then by our answer, of 948.71, and here we go. So now here's the volume. Now this, remember, is in is in cubic meters because those are the values we use, 0 0.00129999, right? 0 0.00, sorry, 0 0.0016, what am I talking about? 2999, blah, 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 okay? So now when I round this, what do we get? We're gonna get, well, we'll cut this off at three sig figs, right? So we're going to have a, a volume value of 0 0.00163. Remember, this is cubic meters. Converting this then into uh, liters, all you got to do is take this value and multiply by 1,000. There's a longer conversion. I'm not going to do that because I have no space here. And I'm going to write the answer now right be beneath it here. Let me just move this guy on down a little bit. And here we have now the volume of air inhaled is going to be 1.63 liters. Okay, so this is technically the right way to go about it. You have to take into account both the, the important thing to take away. You have to take into account both the mass of the air that's inhaled and the volume of air that's inhaled because this region, his lungs down here on the bottom left, are beneath the water. They are submerged. Right, you've probably done other examples where the mass that you might have added, like I think there was a problem, maybe it was number 48, with a mass, you added like a, a, a metal mass to the top of a floating cork. We only took the mass into account. We didn't take the volume of that um, uh, of that steel or whatever it was, iron or whatever, um, into account because it wasn't submerged. All right, that it's very important that you understand the difference between this. So I would check out that number two if you're on this, so that you can see the difference and understand the difference. Also, additionally, right, if you didn't take into account, let's say, the additional mass here, right, of, of the air, uh, how much would your answer have changed? Well, why don't we take a look, all right? So the only difference here, this would have been canceled out of our equation, right? We, we would have just said that the extra mass that was inhaled by the air is negligible. Now, this would have made the calculations much easier. So this part would have been gone to, right, basically this whole piece. If, if we notice, this whole part would have been uh, negated, okay? So this whole thing I'm just erasing now, right? I'm just scribbling it out. So when you finally come down to do your division here, right, this is not 0.948.71 anymore. It's just 950. So you're going to divide this value by 950, all right, 950 that is. So why don't we do that out, all right? Remember, take that exact value. All right, take that exact value. Let me go find it. Here it is, that 1.54639, blah, 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 and divide it now by 950. What do you get? You now get a value of 0 0.00162778, blah, blah, blah. So here's the volume of air that's inhaled when you take the mass into account of the air. Here's the volume of air in cubic meters, right? Here's the volume of air that's inhaled when you neglect the fact that the mass, that that air has mass to it. Now, when you round your answers, what does this answer round to? This answer is round to 0 0.00163, right? It's exactly the same in terms of rounding as the answer we found eventually, right? When we converted it to liters, they're, they're the same when we consider the rounding. However, they are not the same in reality. When you do problems like this, please do not neglect the mass of the object that is inhaled, especially, or, or changed, whatever. It could be inhaled, it could be something else. You could be holding on to now, you know, an anchor here. And well, if he is, you can say bye-bye. But if, you know, if it's submerged, if the object is submerged that he's either holding on to or that he inhaled, 
right? If, if, as long as this thing is submerged, you have to take into account both the volume and the mass. If you neglect the mass, you could be wrong. On this question, considering the rounding, you won't be wrong, wrong because as we know, right, the relative, the mass of the air relative to the amount of volume is negligible. It's really small, but it's not nothing. So I don't mean to belabor the point here, but I, I don't want you to do that. I, I would prefer that you actually calculate it the proper way so that you get to another problem. And, you know, if the mass is now not negligible, you know how to approach it. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it very much. Give us a hand if you can. Subscribe. Tell your friends. And we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.